Hey y'all, this is Forrest Burkett here with the harvesting department. I'm here for another update on the Climate Smart program. Today we're putting out the wheat straw here in Pillion in between our rows of kale and it's going really well. Um, we're putting this out really to help suppress our weeds and keep moisture in the field. Um, the overall goal again of this plan is to reduce our carbon footprint. So hopefully by reducing um, our watering and our weeds of, on the herbicide cost, this you know could be a good result for us. So we'll have another update in a couple weeks. Clemson's coming out to check it out after we get the field done. Y'all have a good weekend. Hey everyone, Edward Halleck's here. Just wanted to stop in and shine a spotlight on some of the updates that have been going on in our transportation department lately. Uh, first of all, some of you may have heard that we have lost Mr. Brian Neely and Mr. Jim Kennedy, uh, two of our managers. Um, we wish them the very best on all their future endeavors and uh, have nothing but love for them. Um, one good bit of news uh, in light of that, we are very happy to announce that we have promoted Miss Maria Motes to the position of driver manager for the Northeast Territory. Uh, Maria is one of our senior dispatchers and uh, is responsible for a whole host of other duties along with that. She's uh, one of our most experienced and capable team members and we're very happy to have her in this position. Another good bit of news, uh, drivers especially, will be good, to, glad to hear this. Uh, we have listened to concerns that have been voiced over the last several years about the lighting situation at Benel. As of this year, they have recently installed a new set of lights, uh, so it should be far brighter during those early morning pickups. Also uh, in truck news, uh, we have recently acquired our new set of Penske leases. Uh, we use Penske leases to supplement our main fleet there will be a series of uh, changes to a lot of truck assignments for drivers in order to maximize that investment. Uh, this allows us um, not only to get the maximum value for that lease agreement, but also to start retiring some of our older trucks, um, either to sell them off or use for parts and uh, put a lot of drivers into new or more reliable vehicles. Lastly, a new initiative that we have begun is to uh, bring uh, our drivers in during our Wednesday morning meetings. Uh, Sales and Transportation has um, kind of update meetings every Wednesday morning to, to go over all the data for the week, uh, discuss pertinent issues, and um, we thought it would be a really great idea to start inviting a few drivers at a time to attend those meetings, introduce themselves, put faces to names, and uh, help them get a feel for how we operate here in the office and likewise to help us really understand where they're coming from. It's, it's a really good uh, way to you know inject that uh, human element that get uh, some engagement with them and uh, let them know that uh, we, we love and appreciate them and all that they do. Other than that, uh, that about wraps it up, but uh, we got plenty of other things in the works and uh, we'll be excited to announce those the next Tech 5. Thank you so much for your time and have a great day. Hey everybody, this is Cooley from the Safety Department. Uh, hope everybody's having a safe week. And for today's Tech 5, I want to talk about portable ladder and some safety tips. Uh, one of the first things you want to do when uh, using a portable ladder is that you always want to inspect the ladder before you use it. You always want to inspect the ladder for any broken pieces or damaged uh, parts. If uh, one of the portable ladders is missing some of these uh, nuts and screws, uh, you might need to replace it or you can uh, tag it out of service so that nobody else uh, accidentally uses the ladder while it's damaged. Another thing to inspect for on the uh, portable ladder is that the bottom of the ladder has good grip and is not worn out and if it is worn out then it also needs to be placed out of service and tagged whenever you're inspecting your ladder you always want to look at some of these labels that are um, on the portable ladder for example um, this portable ladder has a maximum weight capacity of 300 and um, the ladder size is eight feet whenever you're setting up your ladder one of the things you always want to make sure is that these always lock in place 
so that the ladder doesn't lock up, uh, close up on you whenever you're climbing the ladder. When you're getting ready to use the ladder, you always want to use the three points of contact. That means that you're going to have three points of contact from your body. One, two, and three. That gives you one extra hand to do whatever uh, type of job that you're either you're holding something. You should never stand on the top of the ladder. It actually says here on the on the label, do not stand above this level. You can lose your balance. Also, uh, whenever you're on the top of the ladder, if you should never be trying to reach over like to the sides in order to um, complete your task. Uh, the best thing to do in a situation like that is that you should just go ahead and take your ladder and move it to the side so that you can reach it. As you can see, these things can easily uh, tip over. Thank you, everybody. That's everything for my take five. Have a safe week. Hi, this is Kathy. Back in February, Gary James and I attended the Tampa Bay Collard Green Festival sponsored by Publix. W.P. Raw donated 10 pallets of bunch collard greens to hand out. We had a great time and despite the rain, over a thousand people attended the festival. We enjoyed being at the festival and engaging with the community and look forward to going back again next year.